Hey everybody, welcome to a new series of videos uh, from Amazing Max Stuff. In this series of videos, uh, I want to try to build with you some uh, Max externals in C. So, in the programming language C. Now, um, this cannot be uh, really a series of tutorials because uh, I'm not really an expert um, in this stuff. Um, so, this will be more a series of videos where I try and uh, by trial and error, uh, I try to understand uh, how to build uh, um, a Max external in C. So, um, I always wanted to, to do that. I always wanted to build uh, a Max external in C, but uh, somehow I thought uh, it was always too complicated. I never found the time actually to dig into it, but now. I'm uh, willing to, to go into it and I thought I can share my, my, my experience with you so I can share my voyage into this, uh, into this world with you. So this is not a series of tutorials as I said, uh, this is more a, a series of videos where I try to go inside uh, the Max API, so the application programming interface uh, of uh, Cycling74 to program uh, object in Max in C, and you can decide to follow along with me if you find it interesting. So uh, let's start. As you can see, I'm on Windows and I'm using uh, Visual Studio to, to program the externals. Uh, but actually, if you are on Mac, you will have to use uh, Xcode. So let's actually go online. If you type Xcode uh, on Google, you can actually see that uh, Xcode is a program uh, uh, for um, programming in Mac that you can download uh, from the App Store of your uh, of your Mac. Um, if you are on Windows like me, then you have to use uh, Visual Studio because I mean this is what I'm using. I'm using Visual Studio 2017 uh, Community Edition which you can download for free on the official Microsoft, uh, Microsoft website. So, uh, it's really not difficult to set up. And uh, once you have uh, Microsoft Visual Studio or Xcode, then you have to go, uh, in, then you have to download the API for, uh, from the Cycling74 website. So, uh, you can uh, Google something like that, Max MSP API download. Software Development Kit actually is not the API. So you click on the on this link, and you will have um, you will have this page on which you can download the SDK. So we will need this uh, Source Development Kit to um, to program our externals in C, and then you can also access the latest documentation uh, for the API. So for the Source Development Kit. And we will see oh, what is inside this documentation. So, once you download the SDK, then you have to go, then you have to go on Documents on your computer, or uh, I think uh, I don't remember how it is on Mac, but uh, is where your Max Seven um, installation, no, is where your Max Seven uh, documents are. So you click on the Max Seven, and uh, you click on Packages, and then you have to copy. Uh, the source development kit that you just downloaded here inside uh, the packages folder. So you copy it here. Then uh, one other thing that you have to do is to go inside this uh, folder and we want to go into basics because as the documentation says the first the easiest way to to start programming a new external is actually just to copy an existing one and modify it. So what we will do is we'll, uh, we will um, copy uh, the simple Max example, copy and paste it in the same folder, and then let's call this simple Max, uh, let's call this uh, my first external. I think I already did it. So, okay, but this is what you will have to do. So, I already did it. Uh, I have here my first external. So, and once we are here, uh, inside this folder, 
you will see you have uh, an Xcode project and also a Visual Studio project. So uh, now I have also renamed all these files, uh, actually the files that are pertinent to me, so the Visual Studio project and this uh, source code in C, I renamed them as the, the name of my folder, so my first external. Before they were called Simple Max, and now I renamed them my first external. So the next thing we want to do is to open this file. Uh, with Visual Studio in my case. And you will see that it gives you some stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so this is basically a copy of the Simple Max uh, external. So when you first open your file, uh, you, will have, uh, you will have this view, nothing in view here. So you go here on the left, or maybe it's on the right on your layout. And then you click on this uh, file, in this C file. So this is the file actually that we want to work on because uh, this folder contains a series of header from the, from the Max API, which we don't mess with. And then I have here something that I think is Windows specific. And this, uh, this file is actually the file on which we are going to work. So at the moment, this is just a copy of the Simple Max external object. So what I would like to do with you is to go through this file and to try to understand what's going on inside this uh, C, uh, into this uh, C code. So um, if you want to understand what is going on here, it's uh, no magic. You just have to go into the, the Max API documentation and here it will give you um, it will give you some instruction on how to use the API. Now uh, you may want actually I encourage you if you want to develop your external I encourage you to to read this documentation. Uh, for the moment I'm just arrived here. I'm just arrived at uh, inlets and outlets. Uh, the first the first page that uh, really tells you how to actually the API works is this one Anatomy of a Max object. So. Uh, let's see what this API tells us. So the first thing that we see is that there is an is that there is an include an include external H. Uh, this is uh, uh, this includes all the other files for the API, I believe. So let's actually go inside our our C code and take a look at that. And these um, these these other ones, so X underscore obex.h this apparently is required for new style max object now i don't know what this means but uh, let's it's better just to include it always now um, every max object as far as understood begins with this uh, type def structure that uh, is actually like a container for all the values that uh, our object uh, will work on and also it contains this T object type, which is the object itself, apparently. So if we go under definition, if we right click on this object and go on pick definition, then we can see that this is uh, uh, itself a type def struct that contains some, uh, some stuff like a message list, list of messages and methods, and then a list of inlets and a list of outlets. And uh, yeah, so I'm by no means uh, an expert in C and I'm by no means an expert in programming. I'm just uh, playing around with, uh, with this stuff. So I cannot really explain you everything that is going on. I just try to, to kind of understand with you what is going on. So forgive me if i'm not so precise but i'm really not a programmer and not by any means a c programmer and now let's see what we have after that so we have some function prototypes so these are the functions that uh, are called by our uh, object so this can be for example methods for our objects so for example for the plus operator 
this will be uh, some kind of uh, addiction function and so on I believe but uh, for the simple max object we have some different stuff we have a new function that uh, returns a pointer to something to void in this case but uh, can point to something else and then we have a free function that I believe is used to free the memory um, that is being allocated for the object and then I, we have an assist then I think uh, I don't really know what the assist does let's see during the code and then we have a simple a global variable as you can read here is a global class pointer variable so we have uh, a pointer simply doesn't point to anything at the moment and is a global variable so then let's see then we have um, kind of a main function here for our external that takes a pointer to some air which we don't know what is this and then we have a t class object so uh, this is like I think where our object will uh, will be contained somehow so this is I think our actual class for our object because even if this is C they implemented the kind of a class system in C so it works in the end uh, similar to C++ but uh, it's done in C so we uh, we don't have pass by reference for example we just have pointers so this is why it's so full of pointers uh, because everything that comes into a function with a pointer is probably going to be modified uh, inside the function uh, itself so let's see what happens in the main function we have this c gets assigned to this uh, class new function so this is the name of the object this is the name that we have to type in max uh, when we want to create uh, this object for example if i go in my max and type simple max then I have created a simple max object uh, because this is already inside this is already been built and is inside uh, our uh, packages folder so let's take a look what happens next then we have a simple max new uh, which returns uh, something that is uh, type casted to, to the type uh, method I think and this is uh, this is a function that we have defined here. Uh, this is kind of the initialization of the class. Then we have the function to free the memory. Then we have uh, some allocation of memory uh, that takes the size of our struct here. And then we have uh, an attribute. Uh, then we have a variable here that I think is deprecated, so it must always be set to zero. And then we have this uh, enumerator here called uh, a gimme, which if we go into the definition, it says request the tags be passed as an array. So this means that the arguments to this object must be passed as an array, I think. And then this zero that really I don't know what is this. Maybe in the definition of class new we can see what is this zero here. Uh, we cannot really see maybe if I go to definition then we can see that oh god how can I enlarge this uh, how can I enlarge this function I really don't know I just have this uh, I just have the three points here so I don't uh, really know what is this zero for okay but maybe it's written in the API documentation so let's take a look at the API so we have the object declaration, the initialization routine, class new. So let's see. Create a class with a new instance routine, a free function. Uh, so this is different from the simple max uh, uh, class new function. But the arguments should be the same. And then we have, uh, this is accomplished by the export macro. I oh, no, sorry, we were here. So the size of the structure no longer uses the argument, which is this 0L that we see here. And then a descri description of the argument you type when creating an instance. 
So this description of the arguments I think is uh, this enumerator here, so uh, give me, and this zero really I don't know what it stands for. But uh, of course if you have a better understanding of what is going on, please just, uh, just write me, just comment this video, or let me just know in some way, because I would, uh, I would love any help uh, from everywhere. So let's see, then we have a function class add method, so this adds uh, a method to our class, this adds a function to our object. Uh, this defines something that our object can do in Max. So let's take a look at the documentation and see what, is, what it says us about uh, the class add method function. So class add method pin that c function to a text symbol the two methods defined here are int and bang okay this talks about these methods here but we actually we actually have a method called assist and then we have a, a can't if we uh, look at the definitions cannot type check args so i, I really don't know what it means but I suppose that we send a assist message to this object in Max, and we will get some output. No. Uh, oh yeah, or maybe yeah. No. Okay, let's take a look at what the assist. Uh, let's what a look. Let's take a look at the simple Max assist uh, uh, function here. So what does it do? It takes. Uh, uh, simple max, uh, which is our structure here, so our object, and then take some numbers. I really don't know how this uh, simple max assist function works. I'm a bit confused here because this assist inlet, I don't know where this comes from. I suppose that maybe this is just uh, an assist that tells us uh, yeah this is actually simply the assist for the inlet so it just tells us when we over with the mouse just tells us I am inlet zero so this function can actually not be called from max uh, this is maybe the meaning of this uh, can't uh, uh, so uh, it means that maybe it cannot be called from uh, from within max. Oh, you know what I was thinking? That actually this function gets uh, gets called inside as a argument for this other function, but actually doesn't take any arguments. So I don't know where actually these arguments are being passed in in this function. I'm really too bad at C or uh, programming in general to understand where actually these arguments of this function are uh, given. So if somebody of you uh, actually uh, know the answer to that, please tell me because I'm really I'm really lost here. Okay, then let's go on. We have a class register that according to the API, it means that the class gets added to the kind of a registers of classes uh, in Max. So when we type the name inside our object box, uh, it gets recognized as an object. Okay, so we need to always call that. And then we assign to this uh, global variable simple Max class uh, uh, the class uh, object. Okay, and then this this guy, so this function posts to the max window uh, as we saw. So if I create this again, it posts to the max window. Uh, a simple, a new simple max object was instantiated. Uh, no, actually, it should post time the simple max object, I think, but it doesn't. He posted a simple max object was instantiated, and this gets uh, this gets printed here inside the simple max new. Okay, so uh, I don't know actually why it doesn't post. I am the simple max object, but uh, maybe it posts it. Uh, no, I don't know. Okay, then let's go on with the, uh, some other functions that are. Uh, that are actually related to this object. So we have uh, simp int that gets declared. Uh, it's not even declared here. 
is just uh, is just defined here. So we have my function simple int. It passes the value of the integer that comes into s value, which is uh, um, a long. The type long uh, is a is a component of our simple max uh, struct. So our t simple max struct as an s value. And in fact, if we if we pass an object of type uh, t simple max uh, inside uh, uh, the function. It will assign uh, the value n to the uh, s value inside this struct. Then we have a simple bang, and then we have a simple uh, the simple max axis we already saw, and then we have a simple max free. So this is the function that uh, free the memory that has been allocated, but actually this function is empty, so it doesn't do anything. The memory gets never freed, I suppose. And then we have here the definition of the simple max new function. So it takes also some arguments that I think uh, these are actually the arguments to the object, I think. So uh, let's see, let's see, let's see how this works. So we have a simple max that gets assigned to null in the beginning. Then we have a declaration of a variable e, and then we have if the object has been uh, allocated, I think, then post. This is what gets posted in the window in the mass console as soon as we create the object. So we have um, object post the same. Uh, this object. Uh, this gets the name of the object that we actually never uh, never assigned. I don't know what is this S actually here. Let me see. So simple max new yeah, also doesn't get any argument. So I'm a bit lost here. I don't know where these arguments are coming from. And uh, but let's just take it like that. So it passes, um, it passes this stuff to the to the console. It has number of arguments. So this arg -g, I think this is the number of arguments. So if we maybe put an argument inside this object, then it will say it has one argument, and the argument zero is a symbol and is chow because it also tells us. Uh, which kind of arguments do we put inside? So if arg is a symbol, then print uh, uh, the name of the argument and put it inside this, uh, this string here as a symbol. Okay, otherwise forbidden argument. And then return x. This x is actually our object, I think. This x is actually our object. So the class new returns the object to uh, for our class. Uh, simple max class uh, is the name of our global variable. So the name of our class. Whoa! So that's quite a lot going on. That's quite a lot going on here. Uh, what I would like to do now, what I actually already did, is to recreate uh, a new Max object actually according to the Max API documentation. Because if we go again into the Max API documentation, uh, this uh, creates here a slightly different object, so quite a different object, uh, using uh, uh, some different uh, some different functions and methods. So. Uh, if you if you follow this uh, file, you will end up creating an object that looks uh, like that. Now, it doesn't even look like that. Is I have a bit modified. Let's actually create it from scratch again. So let's actually. Uh, this is the this is my sim. This is was the simple max that we copied that we called my first x. Let's actually delete everything here. So let's select everything. How oh, can I select everything, please? The shortcut doesn't work. Okay, we just do the old way. 
I will just select everything and delete everything. Okay. So cool. Now we start from scratch with an empty with an empty source code. So first thing that we need as we saw is this include stuff. So let's go into the documentation and see what we need. This include this xh. But also we saw that we need actually also this other guy that is x obex for new style max objects. So okay, and then we need this type def struct, which includes. Uh, let's go to the API, which includes. Uh, let's see. So instead of call this simple, let's call this uh, my first uh, x. And then we have the name of the object and we have our first value that is of type long. So we call my first x. So we create a type called the t my first x. So we have now created an object, uh, a type called the t my first x, uh, which is actually a structure containing this t object which is part of the max api and a long called s value so this s i think is for struct this t i think is for type def okay let's see what else the api suggests us to write the initialization routine so we had to let's copy this stuff and let's pass it inside here so instead of call this simp class, let's call this my first x class. We could find and replace, but let's actually do this by end to be more old school. Okay, so uh, this is an error because this. Uh, these functions have not been uh, declared, not defined, so it doesn't know that they exist. So let's actually, uh, let's actually, maybe the API already uh, created them? No. Okay, yeah, we will do this later. Okay, so let's we'll see what's going on. Here is like in the simple max uh, example, we have the creation of a class, D class. So this is also a type def struct apparently and is a pointer of type t class and then to this t uh, class we call c we assign this uh, class new uh, stuff as we saw before so this is the name of the object that we want to type inside max when creating uh, uh, to create our object and then we have the create the new instantiation method. We have a null method. I don't remember anymore for what this was. So a free function. In this case, there is no free function, so we pass null. Then we have the size of uh, our structure here, and then we have this one that is deprecated, and then a description of uh, our uh, arguments that since we don't have any arguments we pass at zero so then let's see we have two methods we have my first text int so this reacts to every integer that comes inside uh, uh, our object and then we have a bang so this reacts to every bang that comes inside the object then we add the class to the max registers of classes so it knows that there is an object called my first x and then we assign we assign my first x class so this pointer here to this class so now this pointer t class is pointing to c since they are the same type t class also Okay, let's see what else the API suggests us. Message handlers. So let's create some function that will work as a message handlers for our object. So this is not called tsimp, it's called my first x. Okay. 
And uh, so the, we pass inside these, uh, we pass our um, object here, which has a value called is s value. So we can see that it assigned the value of uh, s value to the integer that comes inside the object. So this is similar to the simple max object. Then let's see, we probably have a simp bang object uh, function. Let's copy and paste. And this doesn't take the simp, but uh, my first x. Okay. So it just, when it receives a bang, it just posts the value of s value. Okay, let's see what we have now still. Oh, we, uh, uh, this is uh, optional. We can add a float to this function if we want. Uh, let's actually, let's actually, let's actually do it. So we have to add uh, the add method here after that. Perfect. Let's copy and paste the name of our object here. And then we have to pass also the method. So the function, let's copy and paste also the function. Nope. So this works with the double. Okay, let's actually uh, let's actually set a declaration for this function. So they don't return actually nothing. So let's write the function simp int that takes uh, uh, this kind of arguments. So a declaration for that. My first, uh, actually this should be called also my first x int. So let's actually copy again and replace this int, this simp with my first x, because simp was the name of the simple uh, max class. So, 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 let's actually first create my first x new. So, my first x new uh, actually doesn't exist actually at the moment. We didn't, we didn't write it. So, it's here. Sorry, I forgot it. So, it's in the, uh, also in the API. Let's put this here. So my first x new. Okay, perfect. Ah, uh, we actually don't need to. We actually not, don't need to declare this function apparently. So we just need to modify this function in order that it gets the right uh, arguments in. Okay, so we actually don't need even to uh, declare the functions before uh, uh, defining them. So yeah, as I said, I'm really not, uh, not an expert here, but uh, let's go on. Okay, so what does this object uh, to let's actually create this object. So if we go, uh, let's set it actually into release mode, x74. So this will now compile a 64 bit object. Let's go into build and then build solution. And let's see if we have an object. No, it's failed. So let's see why, uh, why did it fail? Let's go into the error window here. My first x new undeclared identifier. Now, okay, it seems that actually we have to uh, we have to declare this function before actually calling them. So my first x new. Let's actually declare it. Uh, what is your problem? Ah, this is a pointer. Sorry. So uh, this returns a pointer to something. Then let's create my first text int. I don't think this return anything, but it takes uh, our uh, our our struct and uh, a long integer as an argument. 
Then we have my first bang. Let's actually copy all this part. That's what we need. And then my first text float. Let's copy also that. So what else do we need? I think this this could be it. So let's try again build solution. Oh, I succeeded. Okay, so now this object is uh, here. If we go into the SDK, so into packages and then into the SDK, if we go into externals, uh, you will see that there is an object in the format uh, max external 74. So MXA64. And then we can create this object inside max. So let's let's try. My first X gets even uh, recognized. Let's try to pass it a float. And then it prints on the console, got a float, and it's dead. Let's try to pass it an int. And it doesn't do anything because we didn't do uh, anything inside uh, our integer. But if we pass it a bank, so let's pass a bank to this message, and then it tells us the value of the integer. Okay, pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Let's now see. Let's now see how we can uh, create kind of. Uh, let's now see how we can create kind of. Uh, uh, and a plus operator object, so an object that simply sums two numbers together. And uh, let's use this uh, as our base. So let's actually, uh, let's we need another inlet actually to pass another integer into the right inlet and sum it to, to our uh, s value. So we probably want to sum it to our s value here. So we need integer and outlets. Now, if we go into the max API, the next chapter is about inlets and outlets. So let's see, let's see what we need to create integer uh, inlets and outlets. So first of all, we need uh, another uh, another method called my object in one. So for us, will be so let's call this. Let's write a comment inlet method so instead of my object of course this is my first x in one and of course we also have to declare this function here before we can call it inside uh, this other function and in one means actually uh, in two so this will be uh, integer inlets uh, start uh, from zero, from index zero. So one is the second inlet, okay? Because one inlet is by default inside the object. And if we want more, they start uh, with uh, the inlet one. So, okay, so now we have to find a method to what we have actually, uh, we actually have passed a method to the class add method function that will do something when when an integer comes inside our right inlet. Of course, we also have to define this method then here. So let's see what else we got. In your new instance routine, after calling object alloc to create your instance. So we have to add this line. In our new instance routine, after having allocated the object, let's put it actually here. So int in uh, x one so x is our uh, x is our object x our is an object uh, is our type def struct sorry yes so it adds another integer to our uh, type def struct somehow we can also keep pick uh, take a look at the definition with float in to create an inlet to receive floats and is immediately to the right of the leftmost inlet and returns a pointer to the new inlet. Okay, so apparently this is uh, what we need to create an inlet. And then we need to create, of course, uh, the method to, to deal with our inlet one. 
So let's actually add it at the end of all our methods. Of course, it's not the my object, but it's the my first X. And let's write something like, uh, um, well, what do we want to do? We want to store the value. Uh, we want to store the value of what comes inside our right inlet inside uh, x x value from our object so uh, then here we actually we don't want to do this anymore we want to outlet we want to output uh, uh, the result of the number that comes in plus uh, the number stored inside s value so let's see how we can add an outlet actually to our to our object so this tells us uh, how to create more inlets. This is how to create a float uh, method. Let's actually create also a float method. So let's go after that and copy also that. So it was ft1, ft1 a float. Okay, so this is uh, the method for the float. So let's also add a float integer so i suppose we can simply add this after that so i suppose uh, or maybe not maybe it doesn't work like that maybe this is just for uh just for float input you can mix int and float inlets but each inlet must have a unique number so we actually cannot pass integer and float uh, to the same inlet uh, in such an easy way i think we need a proxy for that which is something that is discussed in further chapters of the api and i didn't cover yet so for the moment let's just uh, let's just stick with uh, let's just stick with uh, the integers so now that you can mix uh, creating using outlets so we need now an outlet inside our type def uh, struct so up here we need to add an outlet let's actually add just one outlet m outlet uh, one okay i don't know what m stays for so then we create the outlets in our instance routine so the rightest outlet comes always first the leftmost outlet comes always left so uh, let's actually write just uh, so the leftmost outlet comes always uh, last so let's actually just copy the the leftmost outlet which is actually our only outlet let's see sorry where do we have to put that in our new instance routine after so i think we can also put it after after declaring our input so instead of t object t my first x and this returns apparently a pointer to our outlet so the outlet in our uh, in our object gets assigned to uh, this outlet that we declare here okay makes kind of sense and then apparently yeah okay and these outlets are type specific meaning that we will always send the same type of message through them if you want to create outlets that can send any message use outlet new type specific outlets execute faster because they make a direct connection to the method under that we be called at the time is in a message. When we want to send messages out this out saying our method, we do the following. Okay, so if we want to uh, create an outlet that can send out, for example, integer and floats, then we have to create this outlet. We have to use this outlet new. Let's try to open this in a new patch. So uh, it works. Uh, um i actually have to dig a bit more inside that because i really have no idea why should i write this because uh, this takes for example a uh, structure and a char argument 
Uh, use outlet new to create an outlet that can send specific non-standard message or any message. Parameters, your object, a C string specifying the message that will be sent out this outlet, or null to indicate the outlet will be used to send various messages. Okay, so we can actually try that. The advantage of this kind of outlet is feasibility is balanced by the fact that Max must perform a message lookup in real time for every message and through it, rather than what Apache is being constructed. As is true for other types of outlets, patches execute faster when outlets types since the message lookup can be done before the program executes. Okay, I would say for the moment, let's just stick with the integer outlet. So, I think this should already work now. Let's just declare, let's just declare this method here. So let's declare this function here. Uh, it's called in one. No, oh, no, sorry. Yeah, my first x is not int, but in one. Oh no, what did I copy? I copied the wrong one, sorry. So actually, this is also not my object, but my first x. So let's copy this guy, paste it here. And it should uh, okay. We need the column semicolon here. Okay, so what can we do now is to say inside uh, the int here. So we can do something like that. We can say that the outlet Uh, no, I think I lost a piece here because we need to also, yeah, for example, we need to, we need to do something like that. We need to copy this code here. So, and here we want to, in when uh, the object receives an integer, then we want that it outputs something. So, um, outlet int, so we know that this is going to go out. Uh, of our first outlet because it's written here so instead of 74 we can write n plus x and then a pointer to our value here x value so i think this should uh, this could actually work i'm not sure at all so let's actually try to build and then it's failed. You know why it's failed? Because max is still open. So we have actually to uh, close max every time we want to rebuild an object. Uh, at least this is what I find out with my experiments. If somebody found a way to not having to close max every time you want to build the object, please tell me. Because this is a bit annoying. So now the build succeeded. Let's open max. Let's see if our object has a second inlet and uh, if it has an outlet, first of all. Okay, so uh, this object is called my first x. Yeah, great. It already has two inlets and an outlet. Let and an outlet. Let's let's see if it actually does what it's supposed to do. Uh, by the way, you uh, as you can see, both the inlets here are hot. So we still have to see how to create cold inlets actually so let's type for example 10 and nothing happens let's type 2 and it works it's actually like the plus operator uh, but just works with integers and somehow as uh, an odd inlet that behaves like a cold inlet basically but uh, it actually it actually works so um i think uh, i will stop uh, here with this uh, with this video because it was already quite confusing, so I will give you this uh, source code if you if you think you can find it useful. Uh, I will put this source code in a link in the description. So um, yeah, you can find it there and just paste and copy it inside uh, uh, inside my first X C. Uh, so yeah, thank you for following. If you really made it uh, through uh, until here. And uh, see you on the next video about uh, building an external in C, in which uh, uh, we will go inside some more deeper stuff, I suppose, and some more complicated stuff. So, yeah, it's been quite messy, but... Uh, 
it works. So, but if you have some suggestions and if you know more about this stuff than me, please point me in the right directions because I really want to understand this stuff and do it right. Okay, so see you in the next video and uh, yeah, see you soon. Ciao.